Welcome to Imperfect Momming. Our children are constantly looking to us for examples. The term role model doesn't quite cut it here. We are shaping their worldview with every move we make. You see, it's not in the lectures we give or moments where we are actively attempting to teach them. It's in the micro movements we make, the unconscious ways in which we navigate life. We are constantly teaching our children how to show up for themselves, their friends, their future partners, and even their future children. So what can we do to ensure we are raising thoughtful, compassionate, self-aware human beings? We have to become them ourselves. No one is perfect, but we can still all be better, and it starts with self-healing. Let's get to it. Welcome back to Imperfect Momming, and we have a very special guest today, uh, Elena with Elena Nicole Health. Welcome to Imperfect Momming. Thank you so much. I'm very excited to be here. And tell us a little bit about who you are and what you do. Sure, sure. Yeah, so my name's Elena, um, as you mentioned, and I am owner of Elena Nicole Health. I'm a certified uh, health, health and nutrition coach and former personal trainer. So I help women who typically come to me because they want to lose weight, but they really want to create that overall um, healthy lifestyle, something that's consistent, sustainable, realistic. Um, you know, I like to say that can last for less every day and not for 30 days. You know, it's not a short term fix type of program. That's not what I do. I help really people really create like that long-term, um, you know, healthy lifestyle that they can, they can carry out day in and day out. So, so yeah, that's what I do um, as a health coach. I'm also a mom. I have a seven-year-old little girl um, and, you know, a wife um, have been married to my husband for about 10 years and, and yeah, that's a little bit about me. Very cool. And um, so you said you're a former fitness, did you say trainer? Yeah. So I did personal training for a few years. Um, probably about five years ago, I stopped actually, uh, personal training. Um, I really wanted to get into health and fitness just based on my own journey. Um, you know, something that I had been working on for most of my life and, and eventually finally found success. So I wanted to get into the health space. So first started doing, um, personal training, thinking that, you know, that was where I wanted to be. And then realized it's just so much bigger than that. You know, I really like taking the holistic approach. Um, of course, working in exercise because it's amazing for so many reasons, but it's not the only component that really uh, moves the needle. So I started off there and, you know, got, got certified as a health coach around the same time, um, but then really decided to go more in the direction of coaching, incorporating some of my experience and knowledge from the exercise world into it, but not only doing that. So I don't do just straight one-on-one -on -one training anymore. Like I did at one point. Gotcha. I don't think I've ever hired a one-on-one -on -one trainer. My, my brother was, um, or is a basketball coach. And so mm -hmm. he, I went to the gym one time and he showed me a bunch of stuff and I was like, I'm not doing any of this. <laughs> yeah. 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 There's so many different varieties of, of exercise. And I think everyone just has to find what they like and what works for them, you know? So yeah. maybe what he showed you wasn't it, but there may be something out there that you really would enjoy. I know mm -hmm. for myself, it's just changing it up a lot, you know, seeing kind of what I'm feeling in the moment and what I might want to try next that helps keep it new and interesting and helps keep me motivated too. So yeah, definitely a huge variety out there. Yeah, there's so many apps for for exercise, but it's also nice to mm -hmm. have the mindset stuff and not nice, but I think it's essential to have the mindset stuff. Essential. I mean, everything we do, and this is something I didn't even realize until a couple of years ago, everything we do is driven by a thought. Like literally the actions we take, whether we get up in I wake up in the morning early to go to the gym. So I always use this example just because it's so real to me and I live it in the day to day. But whether I, you know, I do that or if someone has a goal of doing that, whether we do it, it's driven by a thought that we're thinking. And when we don't do it, it's driven by a thought that we're thinking. So literally, um, you know, mindset is everything you know, um, to, so the actions are really important, but when we're not doing what we want to do, or if we are like figuring out what's driving it is even more more important. And then you can apply it in all areas of your life too, you know, whether that's parenting, professional goals or health goals. So yeah, it's really key. Yeah. My, my coach, um, uh, is a, a business coach, but she's, you know, a balance, mm -hmm. um, 
lifestyle coach. So business with balance is her, is her deal. She was a guest of mine on the podcast a while back. Um, Mm -hmm. but she, you know, mentioned a morning routine and she's uh, put me on to Tony Robbins. Um, I don't even remember what it's called, but it's a YouTube video that I watched this morning. (laughs) Yeah. Um, and so because I watched the Tony Robbins YouTube video, my Facebook ads have started being Tony Robbins and advertising to me. And I just heard him say something along the lines of, um, you know, if you change the way, if you change the story of your business, your business will change. If you change the story of your life, uh, you will change. Mm -hmm. And it's basically you know, there's, there's thoughts and then there's also the stories and they're probably used, you could use those interchangeably. Um, really? but the way having you say it that way, that it's a, it's a, everything that we do or don't do is driven by a thought is really impactful and really powerful. Um, yeah, yeah. And, and a really lot of crazy. those thoughts are beliefs and a thought is just a belief that you keep saying, thinking over and over again. And mm-hmm. um, so if you have a belief that I'll, I'll never lose weight, I'll never get healthy, I'll never get fit, I'll never be skinny is probably the thought that we're thinking. <laughs> I'll never yeah. be skinny. And it, You're not going to get up And when we're couch. thinking that. Exactly. Exactly. And it's funny you mentioned that because like, I have so many different like layers of my journey, but, um, I would say like one of the last ish legs of my journey was identifying some of those limiting beliefs. And really it came from a time where I was actually going to therapy because after I had my daughter, I had postpartum depression. So, um, I was in a really low place. So I was seeking out therapists forever, like trying to find the right one. And then I found one that was just so absolutely amazing. And she helped me identify a lot of these limiting beliefs that I had. And one was, I can't do it. And Mm -hmm. it was showing up everywhere in my life. And parenting was huge. Like I just, she had asked asked me to just like sit down, slow down and think, what are you thinking in those moments that are extremely hard for you? And I realized, I I realized right there when I was in that therapy session was, it was, I can't do this. And Mm -hmm. it wasn't only there, but I was applying that to, I had like about, I don't know, maybe seven to seven to eight pounds left that I really wanted to, to lose to get where I knew I felt my best. And I realized that I was also telling myself in that area when it came to my health too, that I can't do anymore. I just can't do it. So it was something that I was repeating, like you said, a a belief that it was being applied to so many different areas of my life, my career. Like I was saying, you know, I couldn't do any more to get get to the next level. And that's typically what happens. Like we have one of those stories that shows up everywhere in our lives or something similar that's showing up everywhere in our lives, which is why it's so important going back to that mindset piece is starting to become aware of what we're telling ourselves, like thinking about your thinking. And it sounds so weird and like, well, what, why would I do that? But it's like, it's literally crucial to changing your life. (laughs) So, so yeah. And you know, that was a big um, like shift for me. Like after that time, I was able to really change a lot of things. So it's, it's super important. Yeah. In our coaching community, whenever we have, we identify a a belief, not whenever, but a lot of times when we identify a belief, we'll say, where else is that showing up in your life? Mm -hmm. And it's, it's crazy how many times that I've had huge, massive, like moments of, oh my gosh, (laughs) this is showing up everywhere. And yeah. And it just, it's, I love thinking about your thoughts. Like, I love that because if you're not thinking about your thoughts, your thoughts are running the show. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, but you can't and, let that happen. No, I, I, if, <laughs> if you do, which a lot of us do until we decide to think about our thoughts, um, your life is on autopilot. Mm-hmm. And yeah. um, it makes me think of the, the adaptive cruise control <laughs> cars because mm-hmm. in regular cruise control, if you're going 75 and the car that's going in front of you is going 50, 
you have to hit the brakes or you're going to hit the car. But adaptive cruise control, right. you pretty much just can coast. And all you have to do is really make sure that the person in front of you doesn't stop. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, but you have to navigate to where you're going at the at the very least. But if you're on a long road trip and you're on the same, you know, freeway for a long time, you're going to zone out. And that's how our our beliefs happen or that's how our our these yeah. thoughts just go right and mm-hmm. it it's not until you know the car in front of you stops that you're that you're going to shift but that's dangerous so you want to like <laughs> do it before that this is a brand new analogy <laughs> yeah yeah um oh where was i going i was just about to say something and left me oh a while back i heard that on average per day, we think something like 70,000 thoughts, Mm -hmm. 90% of them are just naturally on repeat unless we Uh take over, you know, that control back over our brain. So that means that if 90% are on repeat, that we're creating those same results day after day. And that's great if you literally love your life and every single thing you're doing. But and I mean, you can love your life without loving everything you're doing. So there, those aren't, don't have to go together. But most of us have some things that we either want to grow, evolve, change up a little bit. So that's where it becomes so important that we're evaluating, okay, what are these, you know, 70,000 thoughts? And do I want to keep repeating them 90% of them each day? Or do I want to you know, take a look at them? Because that's the first step is taking a look at them, you know, as you know, too. So yeah. I just yeah. talked to a client today about um, tracking her time because Mm -hmm. she's feeling chaotic and overwhelmed and the same could be done for tracking your thoughts and you know what what I've noticed when I have people track their time is usually one of two things number one they're finding out where they're wasting a lot of time because instead of going to the grocery store once a week they're going to the grocery store 14 times well, that's a lot of time that's being wasted if you feel like you're stressing out, like you have too much to do. Um, the other thing that happens is you literally are overwhelmed to max capacity and need to kind of cut some things out. But if we apply that same concept to tracking our thoughts, what would that look like? And that sounds like Mm kind of what you did to, to shift your huge, I can't do it. Yeah, absolutely. And, and that can be done. I mean, just, it can be done in a coaching session. That's a great outlet or place to do it. It can be done with a friend. It can be done literally. You know what I've done before is like, if I'm driving somewhere, because for me, that's like my thinking time is driving a lot of the time. You can literally like open like the voice uh, or the notes in your phone and just like record if you want to look back at it and just talk. Like, so the idea would be like, say you're really struggling with something like um, struggling to stick to your eating plan or whatever it would be. And you, you open that note up and you just literally like turn on the recording because obviously you can't type if you're driving and just start like talk, like saying your thoughts about what you're struggling with and get it all out. It's equivalent to like, if you were at home writing on a sheet of paper. So like the best thing would be put a pen to paper, pencil to paper, and like write out all your thoughts about the situation, what you're struggling with. Don't judge any of them. Just literally get them out on paper because then you're going to go back and review them. But if you're driving, because I was giving, giving the example, if it's like your drive thinking time, that's the way you can do it. Um, so Uh, the advice I always give is if you're finding yourself in a place where you're feeling stuck or you're struggling, like get your thoughts out about that. Just dump them all like brain dump on a piece of paper. Don't review them until you're done and don't question and judge yourself along the way, because that is the most valuable information is what, what we actually have up here not what like we want to have up there. So, so yeah, just like you said, you know, it's a, it's an audit of everything that you're thinking. I remember we used to have free write in, um, in my creative writing class. And, Mm -hmm. um, the, I think that's when I decided I didn't like journaling because of the, the free write thoughts. I, it was not a great time in my life either. So Mm -hmm. my free write thoughts were, uh, scary to me in that. What if somebody was to find this journal and, Mm -hmm. and read it? 
like that was my was my fear so i was like i'm never doing this again which you know is not great because then i didn't have basically didn't have conscious access to my thoughts because i mm -hmm. wasn't paying attention to them um and i learned to i think through that i mean i've always been an auditory processor i used to follow my mom around while she would do chores and just talk her ear off <laughs> <laughs> but I was processing stuff. And when I didn't have that person to talk to, um, you know, that it was, it was a struggle for me. And that was when I got depressed was I didn't have the, that sounding board. Um, but you know, I'm, I'm a millennial. So I'm in the, this stage of, we used to use pen and paper, but now there's digital everything. And it's hard to figure out where to go or where to be. Yeah. Um, yeah. There, there's so many I, options I, for it. It is. And I, for me personally, I hate the idea of like talking into a recorder because then mm -hmm. I'd have to go back and listen, but I don't want to go back and read it either. So maybe I had just have a problem with my thoughts. <laughs> however, you know, again, it's one of those things like however works for you. And, it, and the thing is like, it's going to be uncomfortable at first when you go yes. back through it. Um, you know, it's almost like if you had like an old diary and you, <laughs> you went back and read it, it would probably be a little cringy in the beginning, but that's like the only way that we can understand what's actually going on, question it, and then shift it. If we yeah. hide from it, then we don't have any control over it, you know? Yeah. So I totally agree. There are so many things that I write out and I'm like, oh my gosh, like, I can't believe I'm thinking this, but it's like, I am. So either way, whether we look at it or not, yeah. we're thinking it, you know? Um, so yeah, however works for you, voice memo, get it in your notes when you're driving, um, or write it out on a sheet of paper. The most important thing is that you're, ac we're actually looking at it. Yeah, absolutely. We have a, um, a tool, a coaching tool that we use called the total truth letter. If you Google it, you, you can find it, but it's basically, there's six layers of, of human emotion. And a lot of times in our coaching calls, we'll have someone do the, the, um, total truth letter out loud verbally. Um, as if they're talking to me, like if the letter is to their mom and they're talking, they're talking to me, like I'm the mom. Um, mm -hmm. and a lot of times they'll filter themselves because I shouldn't have this thought about my mom. Yeah. Like, but you do have the thought. And so if you mm -hmm. have the thought, there's an emotion that's attached to that thought and you need to express it. Pretending that it's not there doesn't mm -hmm. mean, doesn't make it go away. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. hundred percent agree. That's an interesting, um, that's an interesting way of doing it as well for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, oh, what do I want to ask you? <laughs> um, what are you, let's say that a new client is coming to you. What's the, what's typically the thing that they, that they say to you is the reason that they decided to find you or decided to hire you? Hmm. Um, I, it's quite a variety, but I'd say the majority of the time is someone's like feeling really stuck or mm. that's like what I hear a lot is like they're feeling stuck or they're really struggling and they've been going back and forth. Like maybe they're, they get on their plan, then they fall off and then they get on, they fall off. They're just like sick of that. They want that consistency. Um, like I mentioned before, like something that's going to be an overall lifestyle that they can like work in all of like the real life events that happen and not necessarily have to like start over um, in a month because like Christmas happened, you know what I mean? Or a holiday. So I would say like, that's probably the biggest thing, but it's not always that. Like usually it's just that they're really feeling stuck. They don't know where to go next. They feel like they've tried all the things. Yeah. Um, and you know, personally, I've been there many times in my own life, so I can relate to them when they come in. Um, I literally have like, I don't know, over a 15 year journey with like getting to a place where I really felt my best physically and mentally. So I've had all the stocks along the way. So that's where like, I can really relate, you know, with anything, whether it's emotional eating, overeating, mindless eating, not following a plan, not knowing what plan to follow, you know, I've been there, I've done it all. Right. So that's where I think it's usually like, it's a fit because I, I know where they're coming from most of the time, but to answer your question, I think it's that it's like, okay, I'm just stuck. I don't know what to do next. And I need someone to help me figure it out. Yeah. So, I and, wonder... and then second to that, go ahead. I was just going to say second to that. It's probably like 
the emotional eating piece is like a big one. Um, and I think it's more common than we even like realize because anytime we're eating when it's not for like fuel for our body, like literally we're hungry, it's emotional eating because we're eating for emotion, whether that's fun or whether that's sadness, you know? So it's like yeah. when we start talking, it's almost always comes out in some way, whether it's night snacking or, you know, they actually say I, I'm a stress eater. The difference is just the way it's defined. So that's probably a really big, that's a pretty big one as well. Yeah. And I was going to say, I wonder what the difference between I'm stuck, I reach for help. I'm, I want to ask for help. I want to hire someone and I'm stuck. So I'm giving up. I wonder what the difference in, in the thought process and what makes one person one way and one person another way. Yeah. And I mean, in my experience and the, the people, the clients I work with, it's usually like part of it's how long they've been on the journey because a lot of the women I, I work with, they've already given up at some point and they're back on and they're not mm -hmm. going to give up again. They're just trying different things. Okay. So that's like sometimes what plays into it. I think also it's, you know, a variety of things, you know, um, if they really don't think that there's an answer for them or, or a, they don't have the belief that it's possible for them, that's a difference for sure. If someone's yeah. questioning, well, I, is, it, is a result like this even possible for me? It's probably not. You're going to be way more likely to give up. All goes back to that thought, like we talked about, you know, like yeah. they don't think, they don't see themselves there. So like, why keep trying? Then you're going to be more likely to give up. And when I start working with people, like we have some foundational things we talk about, and that's one of them. Like, do you believe it's possible for you? And if you don't, we have to start there. Because right. you have to start looking for ways that it is possible for you. Look at, for examples of other people that have been in an exact situation like you and have come out on the other side. Because once we believe something to be true, our brain is going to look for evidence that it is, and it's going to help us get there versus the alternative. Like we talked about just sitting there saying, it's not working for me. Nothing's going to work for me. That, that's the result you're going to create. So we work on shifting that from the beginning too. Yeah. Yeah, that's really, really good. In our, in our house you mentioned the, I don't want to get derailed by something like, like the holidays in our house. We literally have the holidays three months later, my son's birthday, three months later, my boyfriend's birthday, three months later, my birthday, three months later, mm -hmm. the holidays. Mm -hmm. like we are literally like just in this house. It's like every three months there's cake. Yeah, <laughs> of course. Yeah. Of course. And I always say like, that's, like that's life, right? Like, right. and if it's not cake every three months for a birthday, it's okay. Holiday vacation. Uh, you know, maybe right. it's, um, whatever else, like there's always something or, and yeah. when we, oh, I think the big thing is that we like want, we're waiting for the time when there's not anything. Right. And it's like, that's never, you know, like we plan for when nothing's happening, but that's never, that's not life. So um, 100%, I, I'm totally with you because I think whether it's that or it's something else, there's always going to be the things, the food, the good food, the cakes. Um, so what, what it is, is a matter of how do we want to navigate that? You know, like, do we want to have, and everybody's different. Do you want to have a, a certain amount of cake? Do you want to, you know, modify what you're doing around that? Do you, what do you, what is even your struggle with that as a, as a client? Like, would it be, you can't, stop eating cake once you start or think you can't, or is it maybe you don't even like cake, you know, everybody's got their, their different thing, but it's figuring out for you, where is the struggle and what do we want the plan to be? And then how do we follow through with that plan consistently? Mm -hmm. Yeah. My, my problem <laughs> with the cake is if it came from Costco, then it's this big and mm -hmm. this much of it got eaten like this much, mm -hmm. not this much. <laughs> if you guys aren't watching or are only listening, then I'm sorry. Uh, but you know, only a quarter of it gets eaten. So now there's three quarters of it left. And then mm -hmm. there's the, like, well, I bought it. I don't want it to go. To, and it's really good. I don't want it to go to waste, you know? So there's that. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, yeah. And then I would always say back, you know, like, okay, well, we could freeze it. We could save some, I mean, I freeze everything. Um, we could eat some of it every day for a couple of days, like have a small portion of it. Um, I also would say, you know, that you, the money's gone either way. So why does it matter whether it's in your stomach or in the garbage? <laughs> you know, like you so enjoyed good. it. You yeah. enjoyed it once. It was amazing. Love the cake. 
we don't have to enjoy it every day just because we spent money on it, you know, because I always also say, so what is higher value you or $10 or $20? I would say you, right? Like, so we could say bye to that money and buy three more cakes because you still have higher value than, than that cake. So, um, I think it's just the way it's always the way we look at it. Yeah, you know? No, I love that a lot. Like the money's mm-hmm. gone either way and yeah, it doesn't have to, you know, be in my stomach to have served its purpose. Like it, right. it served a purpose. It served oh, its yeah. purpose. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. yeah Very for sure. cool. Um, is there a piece of advice that you want to share with, with moms listening? Hmm. A piece of advice. Um, I mean, I, I think like across the board, I feel like so many times we, we become moms, um, and I, you know, experience it with myself and I see it with others. And like, we think like our dreams and goals have to like be put off and like, just go on hold. And I don't believe that to be true. And I just feel like with moms, women in general, like we can have all the things. It may look a little bit different, but I just hate to see moms like give up on their dreams, whether that's getting to a certain, you know, creating a certain lifestyle for themselves, whether that's building a business, whatever it is, like just knowing that you can do it. And, you know, there's always going to things be going to be things we can't control, but there's always things that we can. So like, how can we find a way to make it work? And it goes back to what we were talking about before. Like, it's always that mindset piece. What do you want? Why do you want it? And how can we make it happen? So I always like encourage people, whether it's health or something else, like let's focus there versus thinking of all the reasons that we can't, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, So again, across the board, not just with health, but I think that's like my biggest piece of advice just, just to moms, like let's not spend so much time thinking about why we're stuck where we are. Let's focus on where we want to go and think about how we can get there. What support can we find? What can we do ourselves? Um, I just feel like we're so powerful and like strong as women. And I feel like we don't give ourselves enough credit and we spend too much time, myself included at times, like complaining and blaming when it's like, no, let's get off that train and get on the other one where we're like actually working towards where we want to go. And I think that's like the biggest thing that so many of us aren't even aware we're doing it, but we are, and we're actually bringing ourselves down. I I think I couldn't agree with you more. And I think that the worst thing that we do for our, our spirit is decide that I can't be now because I'm a mom. That's Mm -hmm. like the worst thing that we could do. Yeah. And I think like, it's the best time to do it. Show yourself show your kids if you want to. That's the other thing. If you, if your dream is to be a stay-at-home mom, you don't want to build a business and that's not your goal for you. Amazing. That's great. But if you do have other dreams and you do have other goals, like don't let them die, you know, just because now at this point we have kids, like that's, that's like the biggest thing. Know what you want. It goes back to like, know what you want. And then let's figure out how we can get it. Yeah. 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 And that could be health or anything. Yeah. You don't have to, it doesn't have to be a business goal or uh, anything. Like if you wanted, you know, most of us had a life before we had kids, you know, we had dreams and, and hobbies Mm -hmm. and friends and fun time. And, and then, you know, we have kids and, or kid and we say, okay, I get, I'm mom now. And that's, and that's it. And, and, um, Mm -hmm. We don't need to do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, we we absolutely don't don't need to. And I think like the the other side of it is like kind of embracing all of life, like the ups and the downs, the positives and the negatives. That's also been something that's been hugely hugely helpful for me. Like it helps us enjoy, you know, those times that are amazing, but also not feel like we're struggling so much in the times that are challenging. Like just mm-hmm. knowing that there is growth that comes in that part as well. Um, so sometimes if we're feeling like we can't do this because we have too much on our plate, um, we know that that's also an opportunity at some point, we're not going to feel that way. So I think that's, that's something else that, that um, has been helpful for me too. Awesome. So is there a book that's been instrumental in your personal development journey? 
Yeah. So I think, I, I think about this and I'm horrible with remembering books that I've read. Um, there are a few that come to mind and one kind of borders on like self-development and health. Um, it was a couple of years ago that I read it and the title is, this is me. And it's actually, the author is Chrissy Metz. Um, she was in the show, this is us. I don't even know if it's still on, but I was like, mm-hmm. used to watch it like, like crazy when it, when it was, or when it just came out. Um, and it's, it's really her journey. I think like on the cover it says something like journey to loving myself and it's about like she really struggled with with binge eating and overeating and a lot of um disordered eating which I can relate to and but it also is like journey to loving herself through all of it and like overcoming it and for me it again like I mentioned it's bordering on like self-development and health and like her overcoming those things um but that was really a lot of things that she pointed out in that book were just like ahas for me I think yeah. um, like, I feel like a lot of time it goes to like knowing, you know, you're not alone in things and that people have come through them on the other side and like seeing great success. And like for her, that book um, was just a cool example of that. So, yeah. so that was one um, of course, not of course, but a lot of people lo- like um, Rachel Hollis's books. Um, so she was, those were some that I definitely really liked. Um, I recently read Atomic Habits by James Clear. That was a good one. Um, mm. Not like, not like a, totally different kind of read. Like it's more, you go into it looking for the knowledge you're going to gain from it. Um, right. but a lot of things I, I remember and use, use with my clients too. So, um, you know, I'm big on podcasts. So I listen to a lot of podcasts. I do read books, but, but I'm more like, I'm listening to like a podcast a day pretty much because I'm just like, so I'm really into that for self-development. So, um, the, my favorite one by far, it's called the life coach school. Um, yeah. and it's, Oh yeah. I'm like, I love her with that one. Um, yeah. So, so that's been really pivotal for me. I didn't find that until I was well into, you know, coaching and uh, had already learned a lot about like the psychology of eating and mindset and stuff, but, but just the way she explains it, it's the same content, but in a different way. Um, Mm -hmm. so yeah, I'd probably say that's like my number one, um, podcast right now that I'm loving, but there's so many. Yeah. I think that she, um, she's the reason I wanted to be a life coach. Like it was, it was her and, um, the person that I was certified through who was the guest on my, mm-hmm. my only male guest so far. Um, and oh, yeah. yeah, uh, he was, um, my, my coach and my trainer. And, and, um, so I kind of ran across them around the, ex- around the same time. So it was the combination of mm-hmm. the two, um, the, and then Rachel Hollis, I, I, I had stopped listening to her when I, um, when her and her husband got divorced because I was actually grieving their divorce. Like I was really invested apparently. Um, Mm. and I loved them together and I was super sad that they split up. A lot of people were mad about it. Um, but I was really sad and I had stopped listening um, to her podcast and, and, and her, I have all of her books on audible too. Um, and I just stopped and then I picked up her podcast again, um, like two days ago. And the Mm -hmm. next day I found out her husband died her ex-husband. Yeah. And I saw that. Oh, that was like devastating. Um, so I, I have his book too. I hadn't read it, but, um, I was actually reading it when I found out that they were going through when they announced the divorce and I was like, mm-hmm. oh, I can't read that now. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I haven't, um, it's been a while since I listened to her podcast, but I did enjoy her books for sure. Yeah. Yeah. She's she, whatever it is. She speaks to, she speaks to my soul. So <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she's good. She definitely is. And where can our listeners find you? Yeah. So my website is Elena, E-L-E-N-A, Nicole health.com. And then I'm on pretty much all socials at Elena, Nicole health. So it's E-L-E-N-A, Nicole health, um, YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, pretty sure you can find me with that handle everywhere. So, so yeah. Awesome. Love it. Thank you so much for yes. being a guest and, uh, pouring into our listeners and for, mm-hmm. um, having a great conversation. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. So there is going to be another episode of Imperfect Momming for you all next week. And until then, keep healing. Bye guys. Thank you for tuning in to Imperfect Momming. 
It's time for us to step up and realize that our power is not in trying to shape our children. Our power lies in shaping ourselves into the people we want our children to model themselves after. Don't just do it for your kids, do it for yourself. When you become a more self-aware, compassionate, and confident person, you and everyone around you benefit. For more information about me and my work, visit alishalyons.com. That's A-L-Y-S-I-A-L-Y-O-N-S.com. See you next time.